Hi, I did a teardown of this WaveTac 395 arbitrary waveform generator a while ago. One thing you probably noticed is that this waveform generator had a standard 10 MHz crystal inside. Considering that the crystal used only has a frequency stability of 100 ppm, it is not really ideal if timing and frequency drift is absolutely critical for your application. But for your typical use though, the 100 ppm frequency stability is perfectly fine. And I happen to have a Vectron 10 MHz optimized crystal oscillator lying around. According to its data sheet, uh, this one is operated via a 5 volts uh, supply and has a uh, TTL output. Sorry, it has a TTL output. So it would be perfect uh, high stability replacement for the original crystal oscillator. So in this video, we'll take a look at uh, replacing the onboard 10 MHz crystal with this uh, ovenized crystal oscillator. I just took the top cover off so you can see the crystal oscillator inside. So that's the metal can sitting right to the rear corner there. And uh, to demonstrate its uh, frequency stability issue, let's uh, um, turn it on and uh, take a look on the uh, frequency counter to see if I warm it up and cool it down what frequency changes we're expecting. And for that, I'm going to feed the output signal into this 5350B microwave fr frequency counter. And if you recall, I already calibrated it with this uh, rubidium frequency standard sitting on top. And now I turned on the uh, WaveTech 395 and had it output a 10 MHz square wave at about the 0.5 ppm, uh, volt ppm level. And so let's see the uh, frequency. So now it's a uh, give or take. It is at uh, uh, 10 MHz. Uh, it's uh, th 33 Hz off because I haven't really calibrated that unit yet. So now let me put my hands on that uh, crystal and you will see the frequency going to change. So now I'm just gently right, uh, put my finger on the frequency can. So you can see that actually the frequency start rising and if I take my finger off, it will start dropping gradually. So clearly that crystal is sensitive to the room temperature. So by replacing that crystal oscillator with a alvanized crystal oscillator, we should have much better frequency stability. So my plan is to desolder this uh, can crystal oscillator and uh, put this alvanized one somehow I would uh, stick it with double-sided tape on the side of the uh, unit and uh, so hopefully I can just wire the uh, power supply and uh, the pin well the power supply leads to directly onto the board and the output should be very short directly onto the output pin there so to do that I need to flip this unit over and I think I need to take off the uh, the back side of the board before I can actually have access to the crystal I just flipped it over and before I take out that crystal, I wanted to confirm um, the pin layout first. So let me uh, change this a little bit so we can focus on the uh, crystal. So let me turn on it once one more time. And for a typical canned crystal, number pin number 7 is ground and uh, uh, pin 14 is VCC. So here this would be ground and this would be VCC. So let's uh, take a look at the voltage measurement. So it should be around 5 volts. And it's a 4.9. So it's a little bit on the low side but nevertheless it's a uh, you know perfectly fine. And now let's just take a look at the frequency. So it should be this pin outputting a 10 megahertz square wave. So let's take a look. And come on, yep. So we don't really worry about uh, the actual display here because this meter is by no means accurate. But as long as we see that it's near 10 megahertz, means that is the output pin. So once this is confirmed, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to desolder this. Now, this unit actually the board uh, is a four layer board. So as you can see here, if you come down here 
and we zoom it in. You'll see that 1, 3, and this is actually a 4 bull. From the other side, you can see 1, 2, 3, 4. So, by desoldering, that's going to be a little bit tricky as there might be a ground plane uh, inside the board, so it takes a lot of heat. So, I'm going to work on the other side uh, using my desoldering uh, workstation, and once we have that removed, we will uh, replace that with the oven-ized crystal oscillator. And now I have just replaced the oscillator with this OCXO. And as you can see here, basically I vertically mounted this, and now there's some double-sided tape on the other end, and uh, I actually stuck it onto the case here. And the bottom just rests on these uh, uh, some of the ICs with a little cap on tape on top. Now one thing you need to be uh, careful is that this, this unit actually is iso has isolated outputs, so the circuit ground is actually not connected to casing, whereas for this oscillator, the outside is your ground. So to make sure that uh, the ground does not cross, because you, sometimes you, you want it to be floated, uh, you want to operate in a floating manner, so you want it to make sure that this back, this metal, does not touch the case. So in this case, in our case, we put double-sided tape, which uh, um, also serves as an insulator. So that's how this stays isolated. And as you can see here, pin 7 uh, is uh, fitted through with ground, and uh, uh, the signal is this really short wire that comes out of the pin 14. So let me just uh, zoom a little bit more so you can see this. Actually, let me just uh, turn it around um, to see if you can see better. Here we go. So now you can see how everything is arranged. So the only thing that I didn't test is that uh, because right now we're powering this from the same 5 volt rail, and I'm not sure if uh, the original power is sufficient to supply um, this uh, OCXO because during power up, this OCXO actually consumes quite a bit of uh, power. The peak current is about 0.7. Uh, milli, uh, sorry, 0.7 amps. But if you take a look at uh, uh, what we have here, this power supply is actually rated for um, the 5 volt rail is rated for 10 amps, and minus 5 volt is also for 10 amps. So this is actually quite a beefy power supply. And our uh, during the operation, this unit actually does not consume much power at all. So I think we still have quite a bit of uh, headroom there. So we shouldn't be concerned with that uh, uh, power arrangement. Now, so now I think we can power it up and uh, do a quick test to see how this works, how this compares to the... Uh, oh, by the way, so here was the actual, the original OCXO that... Uh, desoldered from the board. So I'm gonna now plug in the power and uh, power it up and see what we got. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn on this uh, arbitrary waveform generator and uh, uh, hang on, I need to plug in the power here first. Now it's powered up and I'm gonna, before I turn on the output, I'm gonna set it to uh, amplitude 0.5 volts, the same as before. And the frequency, uh, sorry, you can't see this, but uh, I'm just setting this frequency here to be uh, 10 to the sixth power, which is 10 megahertz. So now we enable the output. And, wait a minute. We are actually not seeing the correct... Huh, that's interesting. Alright, so let me try that again. You know what? Uh, let first see... Okay, so... I'll put off. Okay. So let me just make sure I set this to the correct input. And I'll put on. Huh. That's actually a little bit surprising. Um, let me see if we can get a uh, output from the rear. Uh, reference output, because that's a uh, indicator wh whether or not our 10 megahertz uh, oscillator is working. So now I just hook it up, and as you can see, we're not seeing anything. 
so that's actually very interesting. Let me uh, um, do a couple measurements when it's still powered on. So let me uh, hang on just one second. Let me reposition the camera and uh, do some measurements. Okay, so right now it is still powered on. And uh, and again, here is the area where we just replaced the OCXO. So let's uh, take a look to see what's going on. And it could be that uh, uh, you know the power rail was not sufficient to supply the the uh, the current, but uh, um, which I doubt it. But you never know. So let's first see what the power rail is. So remember, this is the ground. And so this is output. This is our power. Ah, so look at that. Right, right now we're only getting about less than three volts. So I wonder if uh, hmm, if this thing loaded down this whole circuit for some reason. Uh, just for comparison, we have another. Uh, so some of all these are actually TL, uh, TTL chips here up here. So I can measure the power. For this one. Yep, that's 5 volts. So let's go up here. It should also be 5 volts. So it doesn't seem like that's uh, the, the rail has anything to do with it. So let me investigate a little further and uh, let me power it, up, uh, power it down and uh, trace out uh, the pins to see what's going on here. So let me turn this uh, multimeter into continuity mode so we can see uh, which pin is connected to what and let's first find some reference here so for this IC here um, the pin 7 or pin 8 this is ground okay so this is ground and for our uh, IC this is ground oh wait wow see these two ground pins are actually not connected uh, sorry about the uh, the video. I think it's uh, just uh, somehow um, set to the wrong autofocus. So actually, you know what? Let me readjust it to to manual focus, and we can do it again. Okay, so now we're manual focus, and uh, hopefully it doesn't uh, blur the board anymore. So now this is pin seven. Okay. So I would have expected this to be connected to these pins, uh, but it's not. So let's try the power pin here. And the power pin here is, yep, so the power is connected to all the power. So there must be some kind of controlling circuit that switches the oscillator on or off. So let's, uh, uh, well, I don't have the circuit diagram for this uh, arbitrary waveform generator so we can only just poke around um, the only way we can find out is to poke around so let's see when I'm just kind of uh, touching all the pins to see okay so this is the touching the C57 which doesn't really uh, tell me much um, so let's see here so okay so we're so I'm not seeing anything yet Wait. Okay, so this definitely is a dead short. Um, basically, my meter shows that it's only point. Oh, you can't see this, but that's actually, trust me, that's a, a hang on. Let me just push it out a little bit so the meter you can see here. And now you can see the, okay, so meter you can see. So when that beeps, this is actually point one ohm so that's definitely a short so what that tells me is uh, this it's somehow controlled by this chip so let's flip it over and see what that chip is so now I'm just gonna zoom out for the time being and uh, flip this over so let's see what that chip is so that's the second one after um, okay so I can already see so let's see if we can read this that's actually a uh, by the look of it it's uh, 
74 ALS 04. So that's a uh, inverter. And so my guess is, so oh, by the way, the chip we're talking about is this one. That's the, uh, the inverter here. And so what I'm guessing is that uh, this configuration is a little bit unique. What, what happens uh, is that the ground is actually switched by this uh, uh, inverter. So when this output a low voltage, uh, sorry, output a low, then it turns on this oscillator. Now, before we had this uh, small oscillator package, so that only draws about uh, 10, 20 milliamps current, whereas this one, the initial current would be uh, north of uh, 700 milliamps. So clearly, uh, this does not have sufficient power to power the uh, does not have the current sink sinking capability for this uh, oven ovenized oscillator. So now I'm not quite sure why you would be gating this, but uh, um, my guess is probably after initial test, everything stabilizes, you switch this on. Now, since we don't have the circuit diagram, I can only guess that's how it works. So for us, the, the, the way to fix this would be to reroute this uh, uh, you can see here, reroute this ground wire. Uh, right now we soldered onto the pin 7. Uh, if we reroute it to one of uh, these grounds, I think we should get it back to work. So that's what I'm going to do, and I'm going to, to desolder that. And uh, I think I'm just going to kind of bodge it right here, just like the original uh, you know, botched on capacitor uh, is. So, and we'll take a look afterwards. Okay, so now I just rewired it, and you can see here the ground is no longer connected to the original uh, pin 7 of the, uh, the oscillator. Uh, but right now I just put the, uh, the ground pin to the same ground that these digital chips are connected to. And uh, there really isn't a, a convenient uh, place here, so I just uh, botched it right on the, this uh, bypass capacitor. So it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Now let me uh, power it on and uh, we'll see if we get any uh, signal. Okay, so let's uh, power this up. And again, I'm gonna set it to 10 megahertz and uh, uh, just bear with me. So frequency 10, exponent six, so that should be 10 megahertz, and again, I'm going to set amplitude to 0.5 volts, peak to peak. Okay, now I'm going to enable the output, and bingo! So now we actually get a frequency output, and as you can see that the frequency is actually dropping, that's because the uh, OCSO is heating up. So while it's heating up, I wanted to take a look at, uh, just to make sure that we are actually indeed getting a, uh, an output, from this uh, oscill oscillator, sorry, not oscillator, but from this uh, arbitrary waveform generator. So we're gonna take a look at the oscilloscope, and uh, this is gonna continue to drop. In fact, I, I remember correctly, I also uh, calibrated this OCSO, OCXO against the rubidium standard, so it should be pretty close to 10 megahertz uh, spot on, but it will take a few minutes. So in the meantime, let's, uh, take a look at uh, uh, oscilloscope. So let me turn on the oscilloscope. And uh, I'm gonna disconnect my output and reconnect it with this uh, oscilloscope output. And uh, we should see Okay, so now it's 10 megahertz uh, sine wave. Let me just uh, make sure it is correct. Yep, so it's 10 megahertz sine wave. So we'll put it up a little bit. And so let's uh, take a look and set uh, waveform to square wave. And yeah, there's some ringing. In fact, oops, sorry about that. There's some ringing, and uh, but that shouldn't be a problem. That's because our termination. So let's turn uh, much better. So now it's a 50 ohm termination. So let me turn 
the intensity up a little bit, so that's not a problem. So let's uh, change to triangle, and uh, not a problem. So let's uh, uh, change it back to square and uh, change the frequency a little bit. So not a problem at all. So and how about amplitude? Not a problem. So it looks like uh, this modification is a success. And now it has warmed up for about uh, 15 minutes. And as you can see that the uh, frequency measurement is stabilized at uh, 10 MHz. So it appears that everything is uh, working and I'm pretty happy with this uh, upgrade. So from now on, this is going to be uh, having much more frequency stability than before, as uh, we have a much uh, we have an ovenized uh, oscillator instead of this uh, original 10 megahertz crystal. So anyway, so what is left to do is basically for me to just put the uh, the panel back on, which is uh, going to just take a few minutes. But uh, that's about it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a big thumbs up and I will catch up with you next time.